Next, let's go ahead and animate the inner gradient ticks. So select the opacity map under this object's material. Go to the inspector palette, right click on the U position, unlink, set a keyframe, and at 10 seconds it's going to be the same value as the inner gradient's um, opacity map keyframe, so minus 0.280. And now if I scrub the timeline, we see we get the results we were looking for. So we get the tick marks showing up with the uh, blue gradient behind it. So that's ready to go. The graphical ring, it scales over time, and I want it to change colors as well. So I'm going to set a keyframe at its diffuse color property. So I'm going to right click, choose unlink property from master. Going to change the color to blue. Actually, I'm going to keep it maybe a maybe a light blue. And set a keyframe. And then at 10 seconds, I'm going to give it that real nice it's kind of sky blue or cyan. And so the other thing is to now animate the scale of this ring. Uh, so I'm going to set a keyframe for scale at zero and then go to 10 seconds and then just give it an adjustment here at 10 seconds so 1.130 uni you know uniformly scaled in x y and z so now if i play the playhead on the timeline we see that we've got some nice scale and color animations going on at the same time okay and next let's go ahead and do the speed scroll. I'm going to skip the numerals for now. And on the speed scroll we're going to select the diffuse map because if we remember the opacity map is just the gradient mask for it. So select the diffuse map, set a keyframe for the V position, and then at 10 seconds we're going to adjust the V position so that 170 is centered so just like that so now if we scroll through the timeline we see we've got that speed scroll matching up perfectly to our um, our other animation so at zero it's at zero the 170 it's at 170 if I were to go to like 90 it's perfectly set to 90 50 is at about 50 30 20 so on so it's working out pretty well. And if you want to change the color, so maybe past 130, we want it to go to a warmer color, maybe red, um, I can select the material, set a keyframe here, and then go over to 10 seconds, and let's say turn it red. So then over that time, we get that nice color transition as well. So the last thing to animate is our reflection. And for that, I'm going to rotate the diffuse map. So let's set a keyframe on the UV rotation at frame 0, and then go to 10 seconds. And let's adjust the rotation to meet up with the needle. And so now when I play the animation, or just move the playhead across the timeline, we see that everything's lining up perfectly well and we've got a nice reflection on the inner bevel of this uh, 3D bezel object in the background and it's uh, lining up quite nicely so that's the reflection and we can also adjust its opacity if we don't want it to be as intense but I think we're going to just keep it just like that and actually the very last thing is the numerals and for this we can add our opacity map. So I left it off before so that I could line up all my animations to their correct value, but now we can add the numerals speedo number gradient. So now we see that nice fall off from zero all the way around the gauge. So I'm going to set a keyframe, um, but before I do that I need to set up, or set up its uh, offset 
And then now when I rotate, we see that we can get a nice fall off there. So just like before, set a keyframe on the rotation value at frame zero. And at 10 seconds, we'll set it up to about maybe 230 degrees. And it looks like it's hiding be behind the blue gradient. I don't really want that particular result. So I'm going to select the numerals 3D object and move it forward maybe five units. And so now it sits in front. And we got a nice, nice gradient fade over time. So that's that covers it for the speedometer animation. And I hope this video is informative and shows going from a 3D model with UV coordinates set up to bringing into studio and kind of bringing and composing all of these elements together in the timeline.